Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're talking about some enhancements made to Roll20 as part of the JumpGate project. Specifically, we'll talk about some UI enhancements, the FX tool, and for Plus and Pro subscribers, the new dynamic lighting tool. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. JumpGate was an initiative that set out to improve Roll20's overall performance, aiming for faster page load times, smoother animations, and less CPU and memory consumptions. And there are a bunch of quality of life improvements too, and those are what I want to talk about today. Now, just so everyone's on the same page, when you create a new game, you choose which engine you want to use, whether it's JumpGate or the legacy Roll20 tabletop. Obviously, if you want to use JumpGate, you need to select JumpGate. And then you go ahead and you create your game. Now, the first enhancement that I want to talk about is the ability to move tokens and objects off of the map. You'll notice over here on the left, I've got a bunch of bad guys that are going to come in in waves, and all of those are stored on my GM layer right now. Additionally, I also have this image of a cottage that I use as a mood setting shot. So you press shift Z on your keyboard, and now this kind of shows your players. This is what it looks like as you approach this cute little cottage. So the challenge I've often had is even though I try to tuck images and monsters like this into places in the map where my players won't go, oftentimes they will. Someone lands up parking their token right on top of something that I need. And so this first enhancement allows us to put items beyond the edge of the map. So I can just drag this image of a house and these other waves of monsters off of the map and now I can easily grab them without worrying about one of my players sitting on top of them. Additionally, your characters can't see beyond the edge of the map, so there's no risk of them accidentally seeing something that you don't want them to. And this ability to go off the map extends in all directions. You can go to the top of the map, you can go to the right of the map, the left of the map, below the map. All this space now is available to you. But as you're scrolling around into what feels like infinity, you can get lost and off the map. You can click on this center view button and that'll snap you back right into the center of the map and then you can continue working with it. Now it's also gotten easier to work with groups of tokens. Here I'm going to lasso select all of these goblins and you'll notice that when I do that, each goblin now has their own selection box lit up around them indicating that they are part of the lasso selection. And this is really nice now because it's very easy to tell exactly which ones are selected. If I want to remove a goblin from this selection, like let's say I don't want this center guy in here, I can hold down shift and click on his token and now he is removed from the overall selection. And I could remove this guy too and this one and now only these four goblins are selected. It was possible to shift select tokens out of a selection before, however, there was no visual indicator to confirm that they were not included. So this is really nice now, because if I wanted to like apply an effect to all of these guys at once, or maybe I want to go ahead and lock all of them in place, you'll see that only the ones that had that blue box around them are marked as locked. Now, if we take that a step further, let me go ahead and let's unlock their placement. If we have another goblin over here, who we also want to include in the selection, we can go ahead, we can lasso all of our original goblins, and then again, shift click on that token, and it extends the selection out, so all the goblins are included, this goblin's included, but my warlock over here is not. Another small but really nice quality of life improvement is in the page toolbar, where we now have the name of the map that we are currently looking at. We've always had the player ribbon to tell us what page our players were on, but sometimes as the DM, especially when you have a lot of maps in your campaign, it was easy to get lost and be like, which map am I on right now? And now we've got that being told for us right up here. So now let's talk about special effects. Over here on the left side toolbar, we now have an effects toolbar. This was always there if you had a pro account, but now it's available for everybody. So if you have a free account, you have access to this effects tool as well. And what this allows you to do is select from several different types of effects. So, so let's say our warlock casts burning hands, we can use this breath and fire effect to create a cone 
of 30 feet, that gives us fire like that. Or maybe we want to have a burst effect for something like Sacred Flame. So we could say that we were going to have a burst of Holy, and then there we go. Now we have that. And this is just a really neat way for you to spice up your games in order to apply a little bit of extra magic as you're going along. I'd say probably one of my favorite new tweaks, though, is the dynamic lighting tool. This allows you to easily set various dynamic lighting settings all from a single panel right here on the toolbar. Previously, you would have had to go into your page settings and then there were settings for dynamic lighting on this tab right here to set your dynamic lighting barriers to block movement. And then over here, there were a bunch of other settings that you had to turn on and then close this. So there were a lot of clicks to be able to just do what you can do now by coming in here and flipping these settings on or off. Additionally, we've got some new weather effects. So if I turn on this dark fog and then look through my token's eyes, you can see now that we've got all this black fog roiling around beyond the edge of my token's vision. Or similarly, if we want to switch that and do the pale mist, this is what that looks like. And honestly, I kind of like the pale mist better. I think it's got a higher contrast, but I like the fog too. This would look really slick in like a Curse of Strahd game. Just one thing to mention is that dynamic lighting tool is only going to apply to pro and plus subscribers. Additionally, the fog of war tool has been removed and replaced with this hide reveal mask tool. And this works very similarly to the Fog of War tool where you can hide and reveal areas that you don't want your players to see. And this is great if you don't have access to dynamic lighting. It still gives you the ability to keep certain things concealed from your players as they explore your dungeons. Now this last thing that I want to show is a very, very small tweak, but it really comes in handy in specific situations. When you click on your character's token, you'll notice that there's a little blue dot to the top right of their token. This is a rotator tool, so you can actually rotate the character's token back and forth. This little grabber used to be right in the middle of the character's token, and so what would happen sometimes is it would get lost behind the bars, and now it's off to the side, and so it doesn't get caught behind the bars. Why should you care about this? Well, one of the things that I like to do is create flashlight macros for tokens that are playing in Call of Cthulhu games. So this is what it looks like to my characters. They just have this beam of light. And so if they want to look around, they need to rotate their token so they can turn like this and now they can look around them and see what's behind them, what's over here, and, and so on. But because that grabber was getting lost behind the bars, it was really challenging for people to do that. So just having it over here like this is just a very small quality of life improvement that makes this whole effect a whole lot better and more enjoyable for everyone. And I'll drop a link to this blog post down in the video description, but there are a handful of other things that you can do with Jumpgate. For example, you can have both the 2024 and 2014 versions of the D&D character sheet in a game. If you copy your game, any mods or APIs that you've got installed will automatically be copied over as well. Overall, the quality of life improvements that Jumpgate provides are really great, and I definitely recommend that you check them out. So there you have it, some jump gate improvements in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, happy gaming.